so we are in a record mode huh? formally we are going to start our class and uh, though i conducted uh, two classes the first class was basically very introductory about the uh, importance and subject matter of good governance and second class that i took just before Eid vacation, that was the first class, and I also gave you materials. You, you must, you must, uh, you must mute your audio. Everybody should mute your audio. Everybody should mute your audio. Okay, so just I want to recapitulize our last class. First uh, point was uh, introduction of the term good governance. And you uh, have the idea about who first introduced the term good governance in the world, you know, World Bank, the bank for the world. And he's one of the key figures. That means the World Bank is one of the key figures uh, to promote good governance around the world. So for the uh, interest of the World Bank, uh, it introduced the term good governance in 1978 due to on internationally standardized management that is especially some Latin American and some African countries they don't follow the standard management system but the World Bank need a minimum standard system of governance so World Bank realized and introduced the term good governance in 1978 and gave some components of good governance and World Bank invited uh, the countries, especially some Latin American and African countries to uh, follow and improve their governance system as a uh, matter of good governance. You have idea. Now governance, government and good governance distinction, we tried to give you idea. Uh, governance and government, if we compare with the two terms, uh, we surely uh, can say the governance is uh, a broader notion than the government. Government is basically a machinery, institutional mechanisms, but governance implies the process uh, as well as the result of making authoritative decisions, the ways uh, the government uh, apply their, uh, ex apply and exercise their uh, powers, how they perform their functions. Uh, these are the uh, governance. So governance is mostly uh, broad than the government. What is governance? We also discussed about, uh, we tried to uh, keep definition of governance in our first class. Uh, governance, uh, World Bank defined governance as uh, manner. You know? The World Bank defines governance uh, uh, as the manner in which power is exercised in the management of a country's economic and social resources for development. So three things are involved here. One is uh, economic and social and for development. That means uh, uh, state power should be exercised uh, with uh, economic and social resources with a view uh, for development. So these are the three important words uh, used uh, were used by World Bank uh, in defining uh, governance. SCAP uh, defines governance as the process of decision making and the process by which decisions are implemented or not implemented. So SCAP in one step forward, SCAP gives the definition, yes, uh, governance is the process of decision making and the process by 
uh, who is the decision is implemented and it may not be implemented that doesn't matter it may be implemented it may not be implemented the process of implementation is considered as governance as described by SCAP. we also uh, see even if his definitions are uh, uh, governance eh? the exercise of power and authority power and authority so different 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 terms are used by different organizations the exercise of power or authority that authority may be political the authority may be economic authority may be administrative or otherwise for what to manage the country's resources and affairs it comprises the mechanisms process and institutions through which citizens and groups articulate their interest so this is broad definitions given by UNDP exercise their legal rights meet their obligations and mediate their differences so it is more pregnant than the previous two or three definitions the governance indicates the exercise of power or exercise of authority power may be political power may be economic power may be administrative or any any power any any otherwise for what to manage country's resources and affairs and importantly it gives more clarification the governance comprises the mechanisms the process the institutions through which citizens and groups articulate their interest so the process where people can articulate their interest where group in a society where group of people of a society can articulate can minimize their interest can ensure their interest exercise their legal rights the rights are recognized by the state through the law and through this process people can meet their obligations and through the process people can mediate their differences so this is very nice definitions of governance i mean american heritage dictionary also defines governance you can see this is not so important we also see oxford english dictionary the same thing act or manner landon mills and sergey gelding first time gives a very scholarly definitions of the governance uh, in their books how people are ruled how the affairs of the state are administered and regular regulated it refers to a national systems of politics and how the functions in relation to public administration and the law uh, this is very This is a very scholarly definitions given by Landon Mills and Sergey Gelding. Uh, so we can see uh, three major components of governance. Then we will discuss about the good governance. So last class we found three major components of governance. That is the process, the, the content, and the environment. What do you mean by process? process indicates factors that means process should be transparent process should be accountable so the transparency and accountability should be the uh, process of governance and uh, it is considered as very important component of governance second is content content means what content means values that means governance must have values. Values means justice. Values means equity. And governance also includes another component, namely deliverables. What is mean by deliverables? Deliverables means the state, the governance system, where the citizens, especially the poor citizens can ensure, can have the rights, can ensure their basic needs, and they have a life in the society with a dignity. So these are the three different important components of governance. And without the three major components, we cannot think governance. So what are the three major components of governance? One is process. Process means process should be 
transparent process should be accountable. Second is there should be justice and equity in the governing process. And third is that not only the process transparent and accountable, not only availability of the justice and equity principles in the society, there must be a system of a way to ensure the rights of the citizens, especially the poor people. And they have a right to enjoy their life with full dignity. And in this point, we can say, the dictator, that means uh, not uh, in a democratic system, in a dictator, they may provide huge aids, huge basic needs to the people. But in governance system, we cannot, uh, we cannot appreciate the system. So the system which can ensure people's basic needs in the society, other than the dictator, is a part of governance. So dictator may ensure, but we don't expect dictatorship as a very important component of governance or good governance. Uh, now good governance, we also tried to define good governance last class. Uh, we know governance is for exercising manner and good governance, uh, uh, good governance, uh, very easy sense as a good governance emphasize the manner. Governance means for exercising manner and good governance means uh, beneficial exercise of when a power is exercised in a very proper way, when a power is exercised, when a governance uh, is run in a very proper way, in a very uh, congenial way, in a very perfect way, with the respect and desire of the people, then we can say the governance is good. And good governance, in fact, refers to the working relation among the three organs of the state. You know, the state has three organs, namely the executive, the legislature, and the Judiciary. So the three organs, relationship among the three organs is considered as the good governance. When their relations is good, then we can say this governance is good. Moreover, uh, in operational terms, good governance refers the enjoyment of fundamental human rights. So this is very nice definition. In operational terms, governance indicates the enjoyment of fundamental human rights. So people have this type of rights and without implementing, recognizing and implementing the fundamental human rights, we cannot think about governance, forget about good governance. So the enjoyment of fundamental human rights of the people. Independence of judiciary is very, very important element of good governance. Without the independent and impartial judiciary, really people's rights cannot be ensured. Rule of law, so the state without rule of law will not be considered as governance in a good position. Policy-based administrative dispensation. Administration can run their functions, administrative can perform their functions, but they, behind this, they must have policy. So without policy, government cannot run. Say, for example, at present, we are suffering from corona pandemic. How government will address this issue? They must have a health policy behind this. If the government doesn't have health policy, then really we cannot fight against the pandemic, corona, or like this. Transparency, accountability. Uh, these are the important elements of good governance. Predictability, that means predictable legal framework. People should have rights to know the law in advance, that is predictability. Effectiveness, the governance system should be effective, should be efficient. So these are the important factors of good governance. And without uh, mentioning these factors, we cannot really define good governance. And V.K. Chopra, famous scholars, defines good governance as a system of governance that is able to unambiguously identify the basic values of the society. Very nice definition. He identified good governance 
as a basic values ensuring basic values of the society and he classified the values as economic values as political values as socio cultural values these values are very much this Uh, we were discussing about the values, including human rights and pursue these values through an accountable and honest administration. So values are essential elements of governance, but values, how values should be exercised? Values elements should be exercised through an accountable and honest administration. So the administration where there is no honesty, the administration where there is no accountability, Sir, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu. Okay. Kis bolba? Sir, matro dhukla problem chilo to shayjon. Shundha thago, shundha thago. Okay, sir. So how can we uh, how can we determine that governance of the society is good? How can we determine the system whether the system is good? And we can do it uh, if we know some symptom of poor governance. So the opposite of good governance is poor governance. The opposite of good governance. Is not bad governance because bad governance is not governance at all. And when there is bad governance, that means there is no state, there is no society, there is no welfare state. So, so the term bad governance is not used in the governing system. So we can see the opposite of good governance is poor governance. So if we have some standard of poor governance, then we can easily identify or determine the governance of a state or a society is poor or good. So last class we also saw some symptoms of poor governance. And first is failure to make a clear separation between what is public and what is private, hence the tendency to direct public resources for private gain. So when, the, when in the governance system, a public officials cannot determine, cannot distinguish between what is public and what is private and if they think everything is private property everything is their own property so this is the system of poor governance so they must have clear thinking what is public and what is private public property cannot be used for private purposes but when a system when there is a system public officials don't think what is private and what is public. And the ultimate result is that the public officials think every public property is their own property. So we can say the governance is poor. Uh, second uh, symptoms of poor governance, failure to establish a predictable framework of law and government behavior conducive to development or arbitrariness in the application of rules and laws. So the society without fixed rules, the society without availability of the rules cannot ensure good governance. So the society, the state must have predetermined rules through which people can easily understand their rights. People can easily know the ways to ensure rights. So this is called predictable level legal framework and lack of the predictable legal framework indicates the symptoms of poor governance. Executive rules, regulations, licensing requirements and so forth, we simply function if markets and encourage them seeking. If the rules, regulations, licensing 
requirements, you know, in uh, for initiating a business. You know, the world is corporate world. The state is corporate state. The society is corporate society. So without the corporate mentality, really, the state is not possible in a real sense. But what is the rules? What is the regulations? Licensing authorities, regulations, rules. If this type of principles is if type, type of uh, practice impede the function of, of markets, eh? make a barrier to develop the markets, and ultimate result, encouragement of rent seeking. Eh? That is the symptom of poor governance. If in a governance we see priorities, if in a governance we see inconsistent with development, resulting in a misallocation of resources. So social resources, economic resources, very, very important in a society. And if these resources are not properly allocated, that indicates priorities inconsistent with the development. So we can say the governance is poor. And World Bank says excessively and narrowly based on non-transparent decision maker making. If in a society there is a system of decision making, but the system of decision making is not transparent, is not accountable, that indicates the poor governance. And finally, finally, when in a governance, we see for a project, for a development initiatives, is there any excessive cost? Poor service. Yes, there is a system of service to the people, but if the service is poor, say for example, you are asking the concerned person of the, the government for help. Ah, just you told them very beginning of the day, morning. But if they come hmm, day after tomorrow or the next day, or they come with not having any effective equipment, then we can say very poor service and failure to achieve the aims of policy or other symptoms of poor government. So last class, we discussed very important preliminary things on governance as well as good governance. Now we would like to go our next session. And uh, before that, I would like to give you an uh, option uh, to scope, to ask any question about our last class. We will be here for less than four minutes. Then another class I would like to start and I will give you another link. Thank you very much. If you have any question. You feel free to ask me any question. Clear. I gave I gave you I gave you materials. I conducted a lecture and again I conducted a lecture. Yes, please. Afsana Nazneen Priya. What is your question? No question. So we may wait for our. Sir, Sadia, I will say. Salam alaikum, sir. Sir, actually, first class, I have given material to give you. Sir, I have given 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 you. Today, I'm going to give you the rest of the part of the first chapter. I'm going to give you the present that will be recorded and I will tag it with my Facebook. So from YouTube, you can easily take experience. No problem. 
materials will be yes, available. Yes, sir. Don't know, sir. Okay. Oh. Okay. So we should wait for our next. We should wait for our next uh, next class. Thank you very much. Sir, sir, Munna will see him, sir. Uh -huh. Sir, uh, uh, to password chat, sir. Shabha na ki dhukte problem hoti, sir. I don't know. I don't know. Pass. Asa, chika, sir. I mean, okay. next class, I mean, onno rakta link diye diye. Ji, sir, ek to dekhen, sir. Kindly to dekhen, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.